Um, so a lot of you have probably heard the term cyclomatic complexity. A lot of times it refers to like compilers when they're um, navigating through code. What I'm going to talk about is using a command line tool, which I had never heard of, but had been around for a long time, um, called P. McCabe. And you, know, you can install it on um, Linux or uh, with Brew on, on Mac pretty easily or you can build from source, it's very simple. So there's been a lot of talk about, um, can you all see pictures of yourself on the share? Should I move that? Uh, no, we, we don't see those. Okay, good, must be just on my screen. So we've heard a lot about managing complexity and um, Uncle Bob's solid principles and then the newly coined uh, KISS, keep your stuff separate, or I think there's a, um, another four letter word that's used. Um, but these things are super common. And I picked on these three books, Martin Fowler's Refactoring, Clean Code, and uh, Working Effectively with Legacy Code, because this is a big area managing complexity. So just to walk through psychomatic complexity real quick, um, it was developed in 1976 by um, Thomas J. McCabe Sr., which is almost 50 years ago. Um, and then it was originally developed as a, as a testing aid um, and to also help with the development process. And it was using all the typical control flow operators that we're used to for, if, while, you know, switch. And what's amazing you know, over those 50 years is none of those have really changed. Like our languages, we still use the same control flow operators. So we can still measure complexity even now. Um, and so this P. McCabe CLI, I kind of happened upon while I was digging through a bunch of legacy code at work. And it turned out to be super helpful when we were trying to estimate like how difficult is it gonna to be to test this code and to refactor it um, because we need to make changes, but we're scared, right? This is a classic Uncle Bobism, like, and same thing with Michael Feathers. Like I wanna change the code, but I'm scared. <laughs> um, and also we need to convince managers you know, to pay for it, right? There's some risk in there. So just to walk through an example of cyclomatic complexity real quick before we dig into an example, um, you can see we have some if else clauses and then we start at the red dot and we move down and the branch is that if else. And so there's a total of uh, nine nodes and uh, seven edges. And so the formula is essentially the McCabe complexity is the number of edges minus the number of nodes plus the number of connected components, which in this case, there's only one component. Um, so you can use this measure for whole code bases. So in this case, it's nine minus seven plus one, which gives us three. I can still do math, this is fantastic. Um, and I thought, what a better example than to run P. McCabe on Boost, since most of the code I work on, you know, it's uh, hard to share, you know, fill a bunch of paperwork. I, it really made sense uh, um, when the previous speaker was talking about, you know, sharing code um, that's difficult so what did i do i just searched for all uh hippo files as i like to call them hpp files dot h cpp and c files did a word count so i got thirty-one thousand files in the boost repo um, and then i went ahead and dumped all that i ran that against p mccabe command line tool and dumped it out to an out file and then p mccabe gives us uh, these two measures of complexity one of them considers a switch statement as one, and that's the uh, first column. And then the second column con considers every case in a switch column, uh, or in a switch uh, block as adding to the complexity. So that's the only difference there. And then I looked at the top 40 files. This is a bit of an eye chart. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but, uh, in McCabe's paper, which I have referenced in a, in a link, it actually recommended a cyclomatic complexity of around 10 for a function. And then in some cases, maybe 15, <laughs> um, but it depends on your domain. So if you look at some of these numbers, like you know, 402, I mean, that's an example. So maybe that's not a big deal, but some of these other libraries, you know, they're pretty big numbers. Um, and this didn't really scare me at all, because at work, I've, I run these numbers all the time. And I think you could probably run them, you know, on code bases, large code bases, and see similar big numbers. But I just thought it was interesting, you know, how large these numbers are, um, because that probably means if you go dig in those areas, 
you're probably going to have some pain. Um, anyway, so the last thing I wanted to throw out there is I recently have to, happened upon this book, Your Code as a Crime Scene. And it actually applies forensic analysis to your code base, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and then he has, uh, the author has this tool called CodeMat. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apparently, M-A-A-T is an Egyptian goddess. Um, I, I don't know all the history there. But what I thought was interesting is you, it uses Git history to determine like hotspots in your code. So what I've been doing recently is combining hotspots in code with high cyclomatic complexity to kind of give an idea of how difficult this is going to be. Um, and uh, that's it for me. Thank you.